don't need to worry about the minutes from last time, I guess, now, do we? Uh, I didn't include it. So yeah, we, we didn't, didn't have it. We didn't get them, so we'll do that next time. And uh, I guess the public here is to watch the budget. So does anybody have any comments? I guess. So we'll just get on with it, Dave. Yeah, I'll just give a quick overview, and then I'll kind of hand it over to the, uh, the library uh, for them to talk about their uh, their budget. So quickly, I'll start with the highway department. Um, the highway department, the budget itself is up 11.58%. Uh, that's primarily due to the addition of a new highway personnel, or a new highway person, uh, and also due to a $20,000 increase in the paving budget as well. The actual highway tax rate is up 17.33%. Uh, a discrepancy mainly because in the fiscal year 2019 budget and oh, wait a minute I can even maybe do this discrepancy between the budgetary uh, increase and the tax rate increase is primarily due to what we did uh, in the fiscal 2019 budget, which was to use surplus monies, in this case about $90,000, um, to offset uh, what we essentially did in the general fund, which was an increase in expenses. Uh, so therefore, uh, not only do we need to make up the additional expense, but we need to make up for the lack of revenue in the subsequent years. Last year, we used $45,000 of a budgetary surplus money to kind of soften the blow. That's half of it, and then we're down to essentially using none of it this year. <clears throat> the general fund is up 3.138%. Uh, that's due primarily because of um, appropriation increase, particularly with the fire department and aging and Heartland. There's also a couple of new ones to us this year. Uh, I've got two being CATV and Ottaquichi Health, although I understand that there may be two more out there, um, totaling maybe another 3,500 to 4,000 combined. Uh, the library, and again, Amy will talk about this in a little bit, but I can say that health insurance <coughs> is a big driver of this. Uh, and then the miscellaneous uh, is up, but we also had a decrease in the assessment portion of the budget. The decrease in the assessment was the loan for the 21 house. The increase in the total miscellaneous was a $25,000 to put towards the Blake property in case we needed to utilize that for property cleanup or whatever else that we might run into. Um, I'll get into that in a moment. So that leaves us with a combined increase in the tax rate of 9.67%. Uh, it's a little bit higher than it was last year, but again, we hovered roughly the same. It's almost an exact same situation that we had last year. The general fund is up a little bit more than last year. It was kind of essentially a 0% increase last year. Uh, and the highway fund is 11.5% budgetary increase this year, and last year it was more of a 12.70 or, or something to that effect. Uh, before I hand this over to Amy, I just want to say, um, again, I talked a little bit about health insurance. Health insurance uh, is up starting January 1st, 10%. Um, for the next calendar year, we budgeted a 5% increase. So we're gonna be going against the grain there um, for the first part of our budget. 
For this particular budget, we have, incre uh, we have budgeted a 10% increase. So you'll see those increases in there, particularly as we go through the individual departments, um, such as the library. And also something new this year um, that uh, I did speak to Nancy about and a couple of the other department heads kind of came in after the fact. We used to, for somebody that doesn't have health insurance back in 2013, 14, and before that, and I'm accustomed to this being done, if a person does not have health insurance, uh, there's usually a stipend to that person, 1500 to $2,000 or thereabouts. Um, it is a benefit that the other employees get. Um, for instance, for me, it's like 12000 to insure myself and my daughter. Um, so I have budgeted in for those that do not receive health insurance from us, but may get it from their spouse, I budgeted in $2,000. Doug Linnell is one such person and uh, Nancy is another. Um, we may have another individual that goes that route, but at the moment, um, he is receiving health insurance and I haven't budgeted for health insurance, but uh, that might come down the pike. Yeah. David, is the stipend the same as a single person coverage? No. no. So it's still less than? Yep. Yeah. So how do you arrive at that figure? Uh, that is a number I'm customar customarily see, um, and that's what I have taken here. Uh, and again, you, you know, we can talk big things, we can look at what other bigger HR departments do, but again, you know, um, I'm going in proportion to where we are with our budget and, you know, uh, certainly is an increase over what we've done in the past and certainly is in line what we've, we've done historically. I believe it was a $1,500 stipend. Um, I have budgeted a $2,000 stipend uh, for these two individuals. So the cost of the health insurance is kind of across the board percentage that you expect from the carrier. It's not any one driver. Uh, say that again? The, the cost that you're expecting from, for the health insurance is kind of across the board. All the plans are just creeping up. It was an across the board. So MVP got a 10 plus percent increase. And I believe Blue Cross Blue Shield was about a 12 plus percent increase. Um, on their, um, essentially across the board, to make it simple. Yep. Amy, it's not all gonna quite a fit on there, but I got the big stuff on there for you. And I'll leave, I'll leave the, here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you got it, sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, like Dave was saying, the major driver of the increase, which is 10.87%, is due to fixed costs, of which mostly is health insurance. Um, if that had remained even from last year, the regular budget increase is 5.1% increase. Um, so are there questions? Also, uh, before I get what I should have said before I got started here, is that Nancy wishes she could have been here and she asked me to apologize for her, but her mother has turned 80 and she is attending her mother's birthday party. So. That is why she is not here. So the fixed costs increased $9,963 in our proposed budget. Okay. Um, the change in the technology maintenance support caught me off guard until I read the next line. So you now have a digital subscription line and then technology line. Uh, Correct. But they, they seem to come out to be the same. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, just okay. divided up. 
Yeah. And it's digital subscriptions and services because the majority of the money. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so this was basically just being clear about where we were spending the money because we had yeah. this big tech maintenance support and we realized the money wasn't going for what you think, you know, tech so maintenance or support was. Okay. It's going for uh, the library online catalog is the biggest portion of that. Mm -hmm. And then downloadable ebooks and audiobooks, the streaming video service and the li library consortium fees. Mm -hmm. So we split all of those out into digital subscription slash services. But together, those two are the sa pretty much the same as they were last year. We just split them out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And those technology services are what helps to make our library very user-friendly and good for our community. And Dave, the, any maintenance functions are somewhere else, right? Okay. David, are the maintenance, is that under Foster Meadow Library? Is that the line? Okay. We've added our tech tutor position wages to our regular budget, and that position had previously been funded through library fundraising, but he has become such an integral part of our, the services that we provide to the community that it's only, it, it felt like the right thing to do to have it be part of the budget instead of depending on fundraising for him. Okay. Maybe where is that? What, what is that title? Um, let me see. Sorry. Part -time yeah, part-time oh, yeah. staffing. Part -time yeah, staffing. Okay. part-time staffing. Um, and the next line, library substitute, used to be part of part-time staffing. We've split that out because uh, for our accounting purposes, we wanted to be clear about the times when we're getting a library substitute and how much money we're spending for that. I think we spoke about this at last year's um, budget meeting about the, the decline in um, people who are willing and able to volunteer, right, and, and needing to rely more on part-time staffing, hmm. library substitutes. Have you been successful in recruiting more volunteers? We, we have a few new ones. Um, it all, I guess, we have two new volunteers. Um, it, it's kind of hard because it's, it's a set period of time when the library is open um, in terms of assisting with staffing or you know, to provide coverage when the library is open. And our aging population is not always interested and our younger population is busy with multiple jobs and children and school and yeah but it's an ongoing effort and we have had some younger people who have um, kind of answered the call and are now working quite well as sub as um, volunteers cool. at the desk That's good. Okay. Very lean, this budget. Lean. Yeah. I mean, the big thing was the health insurance. Right, yeah. Other yeah. than that, just didn't have to go in major areas that we, we needed or wanted to invest in. No. Uh, so we were basically trying to level fund as much as we could. And then that's where we're going to be the big hit. Right. We, yeah. we had had conversation in, in the past, that, um, one line item juvenile audiobooks was almost always overspent and we had a conversation about do we want to have 
our, that line item better reflect and instead we're looking at different ways of obtaining audio products for, um, for the juvenile collection, some of which are much less expensive than what we had previously been using. Mm -hmm. And we're also very aware of the fact that there's changing technology for audio, downloadable audio, and that a CD is not always the most popular way. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Hmm. This, this is getting into the weeds a little bit, but uh, for example, the periodicals, we have a new um, uh, service that we're using, so it went from 1,300 to 1,000, uh, so a slight decline. At the same time, office supplies, particularly office supplies that are library related, office supplies in general are going up, but ones for libraries in particular are going up, and so that one um, increased by 300 this year. And we just, every year, we keep seeing an increase in the office supply. Right. Huh. And that's partially due to general inflation of all office supplies, but. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Gordon. You have a long list in the, at the end of, doesn't show there, but no possible grants and um, other sources of of help for the library, and they're all blank. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, to some extent, I can, and it's possible that Becca and Colleen will well, have I to answer I'd like to, <coughs> to others. Actually, because that's a bookkeeping thing that, uh, that I think every grant we've ever gotten is on this list, and yeah. they never go away. So they're uh, right, things, yeah. And then we spend the money for that particular thing, and they're still here, and most of them. Right. Um, for instance, the Winnie Bell grant mm -hmm. was something that we had, oh my gosh, close, <coughs> close to 10 years ago for our uh, graphic <coughs> novel collection. And also, once the person who kind of maintained the Winnie Bell grant foundation, he passed away, and so there's no longer a Winnie Bell grant. We wish there was, because it was always really good. Um, the grant and in interlibrary, that's for interlibrary loan, and that, it, that's a, a state grant where we receive funds for, um, to offset the courier costs for the transport and postage of interlib interlibrary loan requests. Um, let's see, um, we still have money in the Hedwig Winans fund that was a memorial and we spent a significant part of that in getting new furniture and some collection development for the youth, um, for the youth collection and there's still some there but we figured that at this point, having some in a grant that if we needed to purchase something for the collection or new furniture, that we didn't need to just go spending it because we had it. We wanted to be more, we wanted to be thoughtful and take more into consideration before we spent the, the balance of that. Um, and I, I can't speak for the others. Um, well, I do know that the Ashgate grant, that was, again, almost 10 years ago for our juvenile sustainable living collection, and that was spent. Uh, pushing the limits grant, that was probably six years ago, and that was for a particular program. Um, to engage the community in um, environmental discussion, um, climate discussion. And the World War I was another specific grant that the money was, I, we might have received money either from, oh, 
humanities maybe yeah I, I think so right and we spent that money we had um, we had probably four different programs two of which were here in Damon Hall that were widely attended by the community so we continue to look at grant opportunities in fact the elementary school recently received a cliff grant of which the library is part of that will be receiving close to a thousand dollars worth in um, for our juvenile collection and some storytelling opportunities so we continually look for grants to help support our programming but it there are libraries across the state that are also looking to the same places for grants. So while we try to be as, um, what's the word, um, forward thinking, proactive, proactive yeah. there, there's also competition, so. Where do the friends of the library show up on the they, I don't see that. Yeah, they are so separate. They don't show up in the no, at all. no, because they uh, right, and while they they donate, and we are extremely grateful to the money that they raise through the book sale. Um, there's there's not a, we we can't count on a set limit or um, amount that is going to be donated because they don't know how much is going to be raised through the book sale. Can I ask a non-budget question? Um, how would you s describe the state of the Heartland Library? And how, how are we doing? Um, okay, I think we are doing very well. Mm -hmm. I think the, the programming is robust. We um, again, take a, a proactive, thank you, Colleen, um, look at what our community wants. We um, keep an ear out for new technology and how we can assist the community in either using that technology or how um, just latest news and information. Mm -hmm. Our community room, we provide for almost every organization in town and yeah. beyond. Um, for a few new things <coughs> that have been in the last year are the memory lab where people can bring old photos and get them scanned. They can take old VHS tapes mm -hmm. and convert them to digital. Um, and we've gotten some funds. I think this was another grant, actually, right, for the Code Club? For coding, yeah. yes, coding yeah. for coding kids club. and then coding for adults as well. And that's yeah. been really right. popular on both, both of those. Um, and we've upgraded the, um, the internet, right? So we have faster internet service at the library as well. Because a lot more people are coming to the library for, you know, for the internet or to yeah. work on the computers there um, and things like that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And also, as Colleen was saying, the, the code club that we received the grant through the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, and that grant has allowed us to also um, receive little technology we have to engage kids, little robotics. Mm -hmm. So they're learning how to code using little robotic items mm -hmm. and we're not sure if we're going to it because that grant ends in March but the coding club for youth has been so extremely popular we're going to look at other ways to provide a, a code club for kids mm -hmm. uh, we work as closely as possible as schedules allow with the rec department to make sure that all the kids in town are able to use the services of the library during the summer as well as after school. We have a very um, hearty after school group now. Um, 
they don't necessarily come for library programs, but they definitely make use of the library, and we're, we're very glad that we are there to serve the youth of the community. Whoever you want to put in another bathroom. You wanted to put in another bathroom a while ago, and then it was going to be this big thing, and more and yes. more money, and did, to, is that shelved indefinitely, or? So that's, that would be you when I wasn't on um, board. So what I, I, I really just, it was not feasible. Right, yeah. right. Perhaps financially, or financially, yeah, I think it would. It, it would have been twenty to 30,000 more than had been originally thought because of the way the plumbing, the way the concrete slab oh, in the building right? is yeah. and how that would connect to the septic oh. and also um, mm -hmm. current code. So for everything to be up to code and, and workable, it would have been significantly more than what we had thought in the original fundraising campaign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. We I would say as a, just to say how the library is doing as a um, as a new library board member, and I've never been on a town board before, um, and so I'm still just a very steep learning curve in terms of just looking at the numbers and hearing what the staff are doing. And I'm, I've just been incredibly impressed by how much the staff is doing with the, with, as you point out, a very lean budget. It's mm. really astonishing to me. Very lean staffing, a lot of dependence on volunteers, including the friends of the library. Um, but really huge range of programming from the code club to this ukulele playing group I went to one night. So just really, I, I've been, it's a pleasure to deep, deep dive into the library in that way. Are there other questions? I could talk for hours about the library, <laughs> so it's you know. <laughs> you've got you've got a, a topic but, to but do. But Mary, would I get cake? Nope. <laughs> You're not saying no cake for you. So, if there aren't any other questions, I thank you for listening and no, for asking you. questions about the services that the library provides. Yeah, it's really good. I didn't know anything about this memory lab. It's yeah. It, it's new. And oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to um, do more promoting. I think we only just, maybe in the last couple of months, received the last components of, oh. Oh. of how to put it together. So. And I enjoy um, seeing the Burbio updates. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah so that's so. something um, that Nancy was able to um, work with a company called Burbio, and we were one of the first communities in the state, and it was through Nancy's work at the library. It takes not only the library calendar, but it includes any other town organization that wants to be part of that calendar. So instead of saying, oh, there's a library program, oh, but I have to look at the school to see if something's happening that night, and oh, I need to see if Aging in Heartland is having something that same night, you can go to one place. Where is that place? It's, um, we're <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and I believe you can also link to it from the library website. Oh, okay. But that's been. Um, you can also stream movies through Canopy, K A N O P Y, using the library card. Yes. Right. And some of the movies you're not going to find on Netflix. Yeah. Say, say that last thing. So, some of the movies available through Canopy yeah. to stream for free are not available on Netflix or um, Can Prime. Can I watch Ford versus Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> There are, but they do have recent and, okay. and the, yeah. the documentaries are amazing. It, it's just incredible. I didn't know about that either. There's
there's more to watch through Canopy than any one person would have time for. I think you need a marketing director. We do have somebody now who's doing some marketing, and actually she's been doing a lot more with our, with our website and with our Facebook presence. Um, you'll see a lot of the updates, though, in the um, uh, the town report. You know, for the the library page for the town report, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. list all the new things. Oh, There's good. just so much going on. There's a Fantastic. lot going on, but it'll all be there. So any of you who haven't been to the library recently, I recommend this time you visit, and we will take you on a tour. Well, thank you so very thank much. You. Really appreciate it. It's great. Do you want to go on a tour? We could go together. <laughs> I'm there every week. I don't know this stuff. <coughs> you know? Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, you didn't either? Well, I guess I've heard most of it, but I haven't used it. Hmm. I don't have any these kinds of connections. Good luck, Amy. Thank you. Yeah. Like my lasagna, Mary, I will not sing <laughs> all that good out of me. <coughs> uh, again, I gave you, uh, before Amy spoke, I gave you an update. So I'm going to go through um, a bulk of the individual departments at this point um, and just show you some of the highlights of the individual departments. Um, it brings us down to a little bit more detail, certainly, than uh, from the macro perspective, which was where the budget went as a whole. Uh, last meeting, we talked quite a bit about the administrative portion of this. Uh, the big mover here is the um, uh, legal and professional services uh, going from 50 to 30. Uh, certainly, that was kind of a feeling that um, with the reappraisal behind us, certainly we will catch the tail end of um, the legal. It will probably push into perhaps June. Uh, maybe even July, but certainly maybe uh, the beginning of next fiscal year. Uh, however, we think a bulk of it um, should be done through this year. And there was a point in time where we were thinking that there may be 15 appeals, 12 appeals anyways, and at the moment we've got six. Um, so that is a movement downwards from the 50 to 30. Um, the other part I will just point to you going in the other direction again is the health insurance. Uh, not quite as big of a jump as the library. Um, this is simply the percentage increase. The library, and you'll see as in other departments, uh, particularly the highway department, you'll see where we've had some individuals go from a parent-child or you know something smaller to a larger family or something to that effect. Uh, which was the case with the library here. Um, this is essentially the administrative staff, myself, uh, Martin, um, Clyde, uh, Doug, if you had it, but uh, that's what's there, and uh, you see an increase in the health insurance. Um, overall, we're down in the administrative, particularly because of the legal fees. The assessment, again, the big mover here is the 21 house, the 38,950, the loan amount, goes away with the sale of the house. Dave, can I ask a question on administration on that previous slide? Uh, near the bottom you have IT services for 17550 a small increase. Uh, and then you have computer purchases just above that 3000 I, I thought we leased the machines through IT services. We purchased the machines. We purchased them, yep. okay, okay. And did you <coughs> ever swap out the server and, and um, realize that cost savings by going to the cloud with the storage away from the basement? So actually good question and it eludes me, but um, we are still presently working on it. So if we can't go to the, I, I gotta crack up the data server. Whatever their you model know better is, than yeah. me. Yeah. Um, if we can't do that and we need to go to an actual server, that's going to be like a $6,000 expense. If mm -hmm. we can go to the dado, um, it should save us that $6,000 expense. Okay. Um, so we don't incur it. 
we may incur, and it's not in here, but we may end up incurring a small um, monthly fee in the Comcast because we need a greater cable connection than what we have now hmm. uh, in order to make the Nimric connection work um, faster perfect. or yeah. a little bit cleaner than, than what we've got. Uh, so at the moment, that is steady as you see there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Assessment of 38950 goes away, but uh, as we talked last meeting, the $25,000 or at least $25,000 of that pops up in the miscellaneous at the very end uh, for the <laughs> Blake property. Uh, that there is just simply, it's an unknown, rather have it than not. Uh, so that kind of gets um, from one part of the budget to the other, but um, creates a negative uh, or a decrease in the assessments for this year. However, uh, please note that the Vermont State Police is up. That 65,000 is actually kind of a lag time. We budgeted 56 last year. Um, it jumped to 50, 65. <coughs> That's what I've got in there now. I won't actually know what that budgetary number is until June of next, uh, uh, 2020. Um, but as they kind of stayed steady for a while, I'm hoping once they've made this jump, it's gonna stay steady for another year or two longer. So you got that number from them? No, that's a number that's just simply based upon where, close to where we're at presently. I won't get a number from them until June. June. Wasn't the last contract price like 63 or something? Yep, that's what the 65 is mm -hmm. kind of based off of. They, they raised it this year. So they made a definitive jump, you know, so I'm, I've now made, we're, we're, oh, we're a step behind, let's put it that way, just because <laughs> we don't get that pricing from them until June. So, you know, the hope here is they don't come out in June with another $9,000 increase, but um, you know, it, it's hovering around what they increased to this year. Yeah, but if you look at the last two years, <coughs> they're not even close to what the number is they gave you in terms of actual service costs. So you want to play it better safe than sorry, is that? Yep, I would rather budget for what I know. <laughs> than say, ah, oh, you know, I don't think they're gonna fulfill X amount of their contract. Um, they've actually been quite good um, this three or four months uh, in the billing. It's been pretty full. Uh, but certainly I would keep the, uh, keep it at, essentially be conservative and keep it at what I do know and what the contract amount is. Okay, there's quite a jump between um, ambulance services and dispatch between two th the 2019 budget to 2020, a big jump, and now it's continues, continuing to go up. Um, I mean, we have ambulance services from Woodstock, from Windsor. I think you're looking at, I think you're looking at the, um, the Capital Reserve Fund um, for the fire department. So the ambulance services have been relatively out from 62 to 69. Right. Um, again, I'm following the budgeted amount, the 65, 67, 69. Oh, I see. Okay. Again, I this missed, is a I little missed. bit of a guess at so, this point. Yeah, I, I missed that with the yeah, so, so, you know. I, you know, I probably put the budgeted fiscal year 2020 together before we got the number for the ambulance services that came in at 62. Um, although it does seem a little low since the actual in, in 2018 was a little bit more. Mm. Um, there are various things kind of in there. For instance, if Windsor doesn't collect X amount of bills, they bill us directly and we have to fulfill that expense. So let's just say someone crashes and I, you know, they have, don't have health insurance. Uh, Windsor doesn't necessarily eat it, we do. So, um, so that may have caused some of the fluctuation in the pricing. So if, if the person, the, the victim <coughs> of the crash is a Heartland resident or the, or the crash happens in Heartland? 
we get there that so expense. ambulance services when they pick up a person and transport them to the hospital insurance companies are involved and the billing goes to the particular insurance company um, just as like your medical expense out of MBRH or, or Mount Escutney. Right. If you don't have health insurance and Windsor does not collect, they turn around and they bill us. Again, though, is it, is it an uninsured Heartland residence? That's why they're after us. Or is it an uninsured person who crashes at Heartland? Anybody who is uninsured, if they respond to Heartland, okay. and it doesn't need to be on the interstate, let's just say they do an ambulance, they go by through the three corners quite often up Queechee Road or up Route 5, and it is an uninsured person, and they are unable to collect their expense for coming here, mm -hmm. We get a bill at some point in time at the end of the year, usually back in, you know, usually in the springtime. Last year wasn't too bad, but um, that could be part of the fluctuation. But um, we, again, are shooting a little bit in the dark here. We kind of don't get, um, we probably won't get some of their pricing until January from some of these folks um, for what it's going to be. And we're putting our budget together now. So it's a little bit of a guess. So in this case, Heartland has a fast squad, but we don't have transport. So we do have EMTs that um, usually respond simply out of speed to essentially beat the ambulance there. Any ambulance service or transport comes from, as Phil was saying, comes from depending on what part of town you live in, will come from Woodstock, Windsor, or Hartford. From their emergency services department. Yep. Are we Uh, Woodstock, ironically, actually has a volunteer fire department, I believe, with a full-time chief. Uh, although they do have an ambulance service, I'm not entirely sure. I think that is um, manned. Uh, they are staffed. Their ambulance is staffed. Their fire department is volunteer with a full-time chief. Hartford and Windsor are full-time both. West Windsor is a different story altogether. Um, they're kind of like us. Uh, the other increase that you see in the assessment is, uh, I'm sorry, and this is where I thought you might have been looking, Phil, is um, the 37,000 to 49 in the Fire Department Capital Reserve Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, if you go back to 2019, when we had increases, uh, we cut that from 50 to 25. And we are slowly building that back up. It went from 25 to 37. We're making our way back to 50. And um, if you see uh, the effect here. So here we are at 50. We dropped down. Uh, there were some purchases here. Uh, I believe the SCBA equipment and um, some other pieces of equipment <coughs> brought it down to um, 89,000 um, for fiscal year 20, uh, including the 37 that we've got budgeted is going to go in there. We have the 49,000 budgeted uh, for next fiscal year. I talked a little bit about the uh, need for a generator for the fire department. Uh, that would also connect the highway department, uh, would come out of the equipment fund. Uh, however, they need to get to a point, and it may not be in 22 because it's running pretty good, but the forestry vehicle is the next vehicle up, and um, that would leave them somewhat thin, but okay in time to get to the next purchase. But uh, <coughs> That's ultimately if we get to the 61 and $65,000 range. So 
Um, we had a blip, and now we're getting back on track here. So that's the difference there. Uh, Mary talked a little bit about the constable and the animal control last time. A small, well, I'll call it small for the constable. It's a bit of an increase, um, about two thousand dollars for uh, wages for the constable, and essentially uh, an increase in mileage. The mileage is to coincide with what we're seeing. Um, him using, he's already at about $4,500 for this year, so the $9,000 or $9,000 range makes some sense, uh, and he has been kind of increasing. Again, this is, um, he works a full-time job, he's got the 40 hours that he puts in elsewhere, um, does it primarily on Saturdays and sometimes on Sundays and at night. Animal control officer, um, she could, we could probably put her to work all day long if we wanted to, to pay, you know, based upon some of the, you know, sheep that were missing over the weekend and the dogs that go astray and the horses that we find on wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try and keep her focused to just simply, um, you know, bites and uh, ordinance issues. Um, you know, we have had some issues, so we, um, upped her a little bit. Again, that's kind of based on a historical number. Uh, that's what gives the increase here. Uh, we didn't up it, but we certainly could probably up the stray expense. Um, I forget how much it is, 100, 150 to put it, maybe 95 into the greater upper valley kennels there, and, and it takes its course from there. But, um, you know, three of those, and we have met the budget, but, um, you know, until I see something really more extravagant, uh, I'm good. The listers, uh, they are primarily unchanged. Uh, what I can say about the listers is they seem, or they don't seem, but they are essentially growing into their budget. I think back when Bruce was here, um, he put together some numbers uh, that came in around 100,000. 2018, we only utilized about 65,000 of that. However, if you recall, it was kind of Doug and Doug himself. We had one other lister that was in there maybe every other week, and that was it. Um, so we have deviated. We've got a person that works roughly 20 and another one that puts in 8 to 10 to 12. Uh, plus, we have the reappraisal, so we're starting to see um, see us get to where we need to go. We're relatively unchanged uh, for this year, but certainly um, we have been able to tweak some things in here simply because there was room. As we grow into this, we'll probably need to um, um, up it or, or deviate a little bit next year or maybe even the year after. Town clerk is essentially unchanged. Finance department is relatively unchanged. Again, uh, Matt, you weren't here, but I went over that there is a cost of living uh, increase for employees of 1.5%. That's in line with the CPI. Um, so you'll see some small increases in here. As I go into the finance department, you see that here, There's a little bit bigger of an increase for Allison here simply as she, as, as Martin gets and has accumulated his days off and sick days uh, to cover that time. And um, an increase on some office supplies and postage kind of in line with what we're seeing. Planning Commission, um, you know, we did what we've done historically, not a whole lot there. Um, we'll see if we get some movement out of them. Um, I'm thinking that perhaps with the ordinance um, discussions that we've been having and the floodplain bylaws, um, certainly this year, if they don't use it, we can utilize that 1900 for the local share of the um, grant that we're gonna get from Two Rivers. Um, so it's, you know, it doesn't go completely away. It usually gets used, but um, they're not, nothing specific at this point, I guess historically, um, they did have, you know, when they were writing the town plan, um, and it's particularly when they were doing the zoning bylaws, there was a little bit more use there. 
Conservation Commission, they dropped $500, simply grant money that they had last year for um, the 12 acre, I wanna say 12. 17. 17. 17 acre woods there, um, trying to get handicapped access, that goes away. Uh, they're back to what they normally use. Anything they don't use goes into the conservation fund for conserving land. Sumner's Falls is, uh, even though it says 25%, is relatively small increase. I believe that corresponds with the um, porta potty use. Foster Meadow Library, Phil, this was kind of a question you had. Um, two years ago, we had some extreme difficulty with the HVAC system. We've kind of harnessed that issue. So we've got this relatively unchanged. We are doing um, twice a year service on that system. Uh, however, you know, I've got some money last year. If we don't spend it to perhaps utilize towards an HVAC system, um, may want to look at that again for this year if we have any capital project money we don't use because eventually um, we're going to need to trade that system out for something different. BART Memorial Building, essentially heat increase. North Heartland School, essentially a heat increase. Foster Matter Barnes, uh, relatively the same, $25 difference. Recreation Center. Um, nothing really changes on the expense side. This is an interesting conversation. Uh, I did, this is one department I did outside of the cost of living increase, did tweak the salary here, bringing John up and uh, in tow brought Jack up slightly. Um, I believe that this brings John more in line with an administrative role um, compared to some of the other recreation departments. Um, the 48 um, is more of a kind of a program manager role. Um, he's taken on, he had a nice hire with Jack. He takes on the 4th of July parade and other things that uh, a lot of people don't see. The Suicide Six program over at the school and as such. Um, so certainly he's got a lot going on there. Uh, and I think that uh, like we did last year with say Clyde's department, some of the highway folks, um, this is essentially bringing this department more in line. Uh, we also brought the finance department kind of in line uh, last year or the year before. Um, health insurance here actually goes down simply because Joe Olmstead had a family plan and Jack has a single plan. I do want to call some attention, and this is the interesting part of the discussion, and uh, John and I talked about this today, and we've talked about this at some select board meetings. So much like the state police contract and much like the listers, uh, a full staff budgeted the hours that they're supposed to, uh, comes in uh, roughly at about 28,000. We tweaked it a little bit. Uh, we brought one person's hours down to 12 because that's what they really work. Um, I had them in at 15 last year, um, just a small differential. But the actual costs are lower. And um, simply because there are times where we do not fulfill the full staff um, with using part-time students or, or part-time adults, we get a lot of call-ins. Um, it does affect that to an extent. Uh, however, a full staff and where we should be does run at the 27,900. So you do see a lag between what we actually spend and what we budget. Again, I will keep it that way for conservative, you know, uh, being conservative. Uh, the summer camp payroll. <laughs> <coughs> um, somewhat of the same deal. Um, that we're seeing here. Uh, I bring this up, um, let me just finish this out. Uh, everything else remains a little bit up and down, but relatively unchanged. Um, so the expense side is, again, essentially level funded. The thing of discussion here is on the revenue side, where in the recreation program, we saw 
I'm not going to call it a peak, but we, well, we saw a kind of a peak uh, in the after school program, 2018, John and I are shaking our heads a little bit as to what was going on in 2018. Um, and it perhaps may be some mischaracterization of the, the, of the actual category line. But uh, in 2017, we had 41, basically 42,000 in after school program revenue. 2018, we had 51. Um, 2019, we had 33. So again, when I make the budget, I don't have clear guidance. Um, so I look his, at where I'm going historically, and I saw an upward, you know, trend. So I went from 45 to 45 to 48. But oh, wait a minute! It was only 33,000 in revenue in 2019. Um, most likely going to fall short of the 48 that we budgeted this year. I think we are running equal to, if not a little bit above the 33 for this year, but certainly off from the 51. And again, we've got the 25 budgeted for summer camp um, down from the 31, but kind of in line with what we're seeing here and a decrease from 2018. We're not entirely sure what's going on here, whether it's less people using the rec center, whether the library is, is attracting folks um, through their good programs. We could be splitting these kids. Um, Heartland Elementary um, has been declining overall, but um, relatively stable as of late. So what you're gonna see here is kind of an explanation as to why the budgetary increase is 3.18%, but the tax rate increase is 4.53%. We see a revenue, a revenue reduction here um, budget-wise. Budget so I just highlight this. It's kind of a, it's kind of the difficulties of budgeting and just what we're seeing. John did tweak um, what we charge this year for soccer and some of the other programs uh, that we've got. We upped the, is it per day, a dollar a day? And generally, with the decrease in revenue, we do see some decreases in expenses. So what we budgeted here for expenses in the rec center in 2019 um, was less than, uh, the 247 was less than what we budgeted for in the 290. So you see some correspondence with the revenue. So it's not like we're completely, you know, out to lunch if we don't get that revenue. Again, the expenses tend to kind of drag along with it, but it certainly is, you know, explains why that discrepancy is between the general fund tax fund and the general fund, but just um, some discussion that John and I have been having as to, you know, how to, you know, again, with the pricing and, and what we've got going on and is this a trend and where's the trend going. Uh, I will take a moment just to, show, and again, so I believe that my understanding of the Heartland policy is, is that the rec center program revenues at least offset John and the assistant. And you'll see where 2015, um, we were essentially covering program expenses 50%, uh, and that increased in 2008 up to 62.7, and then we've kind of come back down. Again, I think that if we don't get to where we need to go, these expenses will come down a little bit and we may end up at the 56. But just as far as the policy goes, this is the total cost of John, and I'm sorry, I should have um, Jack there, but that cost is correct. 
So with the benefits uh, and wages, it costs us to employ the two individuals, 141,203. And you'll see that um, the discrepancy between revenues and expenses is 135,358. So we are covering at least the, the two positions here. Um, if you factor in the actual building and the maintenance and stuff, um, not quite. Um, there's a little bit of a wider gap there at one, close to 150. Um, but at least from a program point of view, the program revenue is offsetting uh, the cost of the two employees. Rec center building itself increases mainly due to the heat. Activity center is relatively unchanged. Actually, essentially is unchanged. Town garage is essentially the heat increase. Damon Hall, again, is essentially heat. Capital improvements, I'm still working on the front steps. Uh, so I'm still working in this fiscal year technically, which <laughs> puts me behind the eight ball a little bit as far as being prepared and going into next construction season. However, I advocate keeping the $60,000 that we have budgeted in the last three years, certainly if we decide to do the Damon Hall steps, um, which would then push us into next fiscal year along with the rec center steps. It's gonna eat up close to the 60. Uh, if we do anything with the library, uh, it is going to, uh, talking about the clapboard or the painting, it's going to take up a sizable chunk of that. Um, we've got plenty of other things I can throw onto that list. So I feel very comfortable keeping that number where it is. Um, the only downfall is, is as I'm speaking today, I'm not quite as where I should be as far as having something to put out to bid and actually getting ready to go into the spring. As you know, we're still working on the rec steps, but um, again, if there's anything left over out of this, I would look towards buildings or the HVAC system. <coughs> Buildings and grounds, I'm ultimately gonna end up putting this over in the highway department, this, this total box here to go along with the buildings and grounds employee. Relatively unchanged, cemetery commission is unchanged, 37.50 in there for trees. Nothing for the Route 21 house. Grants appropriations, as I mentioned, is up with the fire with um, Aging and Heartland, we have the two new ones, Cover Home, I'm sorry, CATV and um, Ottaquichi Health. There is possibly two others hanging out there. And the miscellaneous, I talked about the 25,000 for the Michael Blake property. And I've got a small bump, I could probably take a thousand off of this and make it a bump to 11. I got a little bit of a hassle from the fireworks folks. We had been spending relatively the same amount for five years. They <coughs> politely reminded me of inflationary um, pressures. And uh, so we have upped a little bit of what we put into the fire. And I think that we may want to look at uh, somehow reaching out to our volunteers and doing something more with the volunteers to get increased volunteer help for the July 4th, whether that be some sort of a dinner or a barbecue, kind of like the covered bridge. A lot of the road races do something for the volunteers. Um, we're down to strictly rec folks at this point, you know, rec volunteers from their committee, rec employees. So we need to instill some fun or, or something into that in order to keep that going. Um, that's it there. I'll just go switch over to the highway fund real quick. Uh, I talked about most of the major changes. To that, I'll just fixate a little bit on some of the details. Talked about the extra person. The extra person equates into 
essentially $68,000, including insurance and benefits. Um, so you'll see an increase in the wages that is broken out between both the summer and the winter. Uh, you see an increase in the health insurance. Uh, not only is the new employee in there, but we had two employees go from, actually we had one employee that's switching from a parent-child to a full family. We had one employee leave us who is a parent and child. The new person had a family. So you see kind of a sizable increase there. <coughs> Dave, the, um, <coughs> the continuing education under the general highway admin, um, that doesn't seem like much for all of the activity that's going on with the different strategies for ditching, for cleaning ditches, just those two come to mind very quickly. Um, I mean, do we, do we get free training from Vermont Local Roads? Uh, I can't remember if we have to pay for that or not. Uh, we sign up. Yeah, they're pretty reasonable. Yeah, they're really pretty reasonable. We hosted one last year. I'm not even, I think we paid for the crew to go, even though it was here. Um, we sent the whole entire crew to two of them. And I actually don't even remember signing the bill, um, now that I think about it. I think it comes through there, but it's, it's Better Back Roads is a fantastic resource. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, I mentioned the paving, uh, $20,000 increase. Salt is a $15,000 increase. And the last thing I'm just going to hit on is um, I upped, and again, we're slowly getting back. This came back down a little bit because there was some relatively, some comfort level with this. That, away, that went away pretty quick after um, we purchased two dump trucks, but we were at a higher number for, and again, this is a total. So what we used to do with the equipment fund is the equipment fund, the actual operations, the maintenance and the gas and all that stuff used to be in with the equipment fund. It was very difficult to kind of figure out what was actually going to the reserves. So we've broken this out and these are numbers that are going to the reserve accounts. So we have up the, technically the amount that we toward, put towards this cluster, uh, although we're trying to better identify which actually goes into reserve so that we can better plan. Um, we're working our way back up. We've done that again here. Um, it's not a huge jump, but it's a $5,000 jump. And I'm just going to go pretty quickly here. So these are the numbers that have made it into the equipment fund. So that's essentially after those operational expenses, what actually goes into it. What we expensed in that particular year, giving us a total expense, giving us what we've got left for a number in the equipment fund. So as you see, for instance, this year, just how it happened, we had the two dump trucks and a recreation van. Um, so we are down to about 150,000. We've got, again, this is an estimate number going into the fund. We purchased the tractor, that's the true cost, the 118. We're looking to purchase another rec van that is on the list um, and has been on our list. It's going to give us a fund balance of 143. Um, this number comes up, um, it's not just the 5,000, the loan for truck 14 or that um, White Star, it's a White Star, Western Star truck went away. So we pick up some extra money going into this fund instead of going to a loan. Uh, however, the next thing on our list for next fiscal year is a loader uh, and a buildings and grounds 
um, truck, which brings the fund balance down to a 123.7. So that's a little bit of an uncomfort level there as we go into two more truck purchases. But another year after this, we've got one dump truck or two, you know, the cycle essentially needs to start over again. So um, that 5,000, I will probably look to continue to replenish this. And um, there's also been, this goes back to Phil's committee meeting, uh, committee that uh, you'll hear more of later. There's some talk of an actual reserve account for highway. So the balance here, which you don't see in this year's budget, again, the priority was for a new person, but um, you know, we need to up this as well. And this, you know, we need to keep an eye on this and make sure that we've got money available for uh, not only purchases in the future, but in case something bad happens, um, you know, we have a truck go out unexpectedly and we can recover. That's it. I could go down the room. Democrats are downstairs. Dave, we changed um, health carriers last year. Yep. yep. So when I was going through my papers uh, looking to shred some things, I found something from 2016, 17. It was these different accounts, like reserve accounts. I don't see them in here. Where are they accounted for? They wouldn't be in this because it's not a budget. They're or where would special reserve accounts be? Like when do we get those? Which special reserve well, accounts? There was a whole bunch of them. There was are you looking at a report? Or so those budget? are in the town. Those are in the town report every year. Okay. And I can get you a town report, but um, no, I have a town report. This was a loose. This was like a handout. They are. I mean, we can. Actually, we need to wait until the audit comes in um, to give you an update on the reserve accounts. Because um, the reason I'm asking what caught my eye was there was one called Cemetery Fund. I'm wondering. Yeah, there's like less than so, um, and Martin will need to get you the number, but when I came <laughs> on, there was like 10 grand in it. Yes. And you spent like $4,500 on a tree uh, for the Heartland Hill Cemetery. Uh, if you recall, the gentleman up who lives on Hartman McGill. Hill, kind of across from that. McGill Cemetery, I believe. Was this, uh, this, so this was out of that fund, not yep. out of the cemetery committee money? Yep. Okay. So that fund had like, I'm just going to go from a wild guess, you know, this, and I can get the town report, but I remember it having like 10 grand in it. Yes, it did. And yeah. we spent close to five. Um, on a chipper, on a tree that we took down that was pretty monstrous tree that came out of that fund, which brought that fund down. So is that fund available for the cemetery committee? It is available to, um, it is available to use upon select board approval, yes. So is that essentially doubles the amount available to them. Well, yes and no. Well, their budget this year is 4,500. Huh? Depends on what they want to do, Well, I they're guess. not doing anything careless or, you know. Sarah, would you like to speak?
so they they used to be and they were in CDs and we had like 58 of them and it was very difficult to account for um, and you may be very actually you may be very up to date on this so a bank came out with a nifty idea Mascoma Bank that said hey um, we will uh, I'm not going to quite get this right but they can between working between various systems can insure above the $250,000 rate and you can pool in what's called a sweep account. Um, essentially, you can park $2 million there um, and be fully insured and get an interest rate, Martin, that we're joining. Um, so to answer that a little bit more, so since, and Deb, Olmsted, although I was familiar with this from the from Norwich, Deb Olmsted, when she came on, um, switched over to Mascoma, and um, has essentially over time we've closed those individual CDs, and you'll see the increase in the interest from 32 to 11 to 12. So it's. It's a pretty unique and, from where I sit, a very user-friendly system. It allows us to utilize, we can draw from that sweep account, uh, we can put money back into it, and essentially, as long as it's in that sweep account, it earns a very high interest rate. The, there's a separate account that it sweeps into, which is used to pay your monthly or your, your weekly bills, a little less there, but, um, Yes. So you're saying as long as that money stays in that account, it'll keep earning interest. Um, so, <laughs> so, so Martin and I call it the mama bear. So if you sweep into mama bear, it, it earns a higher interest rate. So we try, Martin tries to, dip, both Deb and Martin try to keep as much of our money in the bigger sweep account, Mama Bear, but you need to pay, there is a less, a smaller holding account with less interest that you actually pay, your, your cash flow comes in and out of. So the, the, the Mama Bear is where the higher interest rate is and where we try and park most of our money, but we need to pull out of it depending on our needs. Like when we need to write you know, a $500,000 check for the school, we need to pull out of the Mama Bear and into the smaller account and then we write a check and it comes out of there. So we keep, I don't know what the amount is, but we keep X amount in the smaller account on kind of a weekly basis to operate on, and then we try and put the other stuff into, since we have the sweep account, it earns higher interest. So if the cemetery committee got permission from the select board to uh, use some of that money, it would be available. Yeah. The cemetery committee was struggling with just how to spend the four thousand dollars in their budget, even though there seem to be more trees to come down than there are monies. Um, but I think they have a fairly clear plan for next year for what they're what they're going to do. Um, additional fencing up at the Quarry Road Cemetery, concentrate on the Clay Hill Cemetery for some stone repair. Um, so they seem to be ready to spend and they're also having a volunteer problem you know they don't they need people so. but it is interesting that should trees come up that need to be cut there is that special fund cemetery for a tree or two yes <laughs> yeah well, I, I, i'm going from memory maybe more than that no it, i yeah, i just looked at it was like eleven thousand. Yeah. but that was from 16 to 17 yeah. so and there was an expense out of there for yeah you said the 4500 yeah. yeah thank you you're welcome so david are we still at that 9.6 something so we're still there uh, i have been you know in between 
certainly in between the last discussion and this discussion, didn't want to make any changes and throw you for a loop before the actual complete discussion was done and you had a chance mm -hmm. to kind of look at the finer details. Um, but we're still at the 9.66 um, and you know we'll discuss this more on December 2nd and the 18th um, and certainly there's things that does come in uh, like VLCT just came in with their dues. I've got to match it up with what we've got. We'll start to see some other things come in. Um, we make some tweaks kind of along the way. We, we didn't catch something. Or in discussion with the select board, you want to go a particular way from a policy point of view. <coughs> That you had a, a slide of the summary with the for the general fund of the highway. The overall. Um, the for one the general you, fund. Um, and then I've got one for the highway. Fund. One was it was really just a simple slide that was showing both a graph of where we were uh, and from the tax rate perspective. Yeah, the tax rate perspective. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Under winter general maintenance, overtimes jumped 68 percent. Yeah. So we tweaked that a little bit, and again, that's a little bit of a guess. Um, we look back at what we did last year in the last couple of years um, for guidance, um, and we did that here. However, we've got two new people here. So that's factored into, their hours are factored in. So it's possible that with, I shouldn't say two, one new person. Um, we did have, although we limped along last year, at various points in times, we didn't have a buildings and grounds person. We lost Dan in July and January 1st. Um, Greg left us at the end of January, so um, we didn't have anybody extra for January. Uh, we pulled John Dumas in February, I think. You know, so we've got Evan now as a full-time buildings and grounds person. Um, so from a schedule point of view, he would be on right through the winter time. And we've got a new person. So we've got their hours factored in based upon what we were seeing with the other employees. However, there's an argument to be made that, okay, with the extra guy or two, there's technically gonna be less overtime for the others. But again, we went somewhat conservative and we've got a number that um, we've got from an overtime perspective. And already we've had three, you know, we started last, you know, this week, last year, and I think we've got one coming up Thursday and Friday, uh, we were out Earlier in the week, uh, Sunday, we were out um, last night. Um, we were out and we've been out twice. Yeah. So already we've gone down that path. So again, um, much like the other numbers, you know, that's based upon what we're seeing, what, what, you know, from an hour perspective, that's what they would work based upon what we're seeing, but we may not work that much, but again, I've gone with a conservative number. <coughs> Just for Sarah and Ron, that number was right, uh, right here. 
Uh, and again, it's, you'll see a difference between the budgeted number and what last year and what we budgeted this year, but the actual was 22.5. So it's not too far off from the 28. Um, certainly kind of realistic, but again, it's certainly possible with the extra hands, everybody works a little bit less, so we may come in around the same 22.5. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or we're just can do a better job and everybody works the extra overtime, you know, it's, it's still yet to be kind of seen. Okay, if you have any direct questions for Bill or John or Doug or I want to ask you, John, um, you said you compared the costs for the Heartland Rec with other, and where where did Heartland fall? Um, in terms of expenses, in general, we seem to be a little bit more in the winter. We're actually more on par with the Do you have children from other towns, or it's just hard? Uh, yeah. Facilities, the playing fields and the swings and things. Are they? Is there a budget in here to increase maintenance on those, or is that pretty? Are they pretty much steady state? Uh, those are not necessarily budgeted. We've been looking at. Dave and I've been looking into some of our uh, donated funds, our special accounts to take on some of these projects. That's how we were able to resurface the basketball court uh, this past year. Um, some of these special. People stop in can make use on it of their own time. I, I really think that's the biggest need recreationally is these no registration, no obligation recreational resources that our community can provide. So someone can just show up and use on their own time, something like, like a playground or you know your park. I think that's that's like been shown in of a lot of rec surveys of what people are really looking for in today's day and age is these these no obligation free recreational opportunities. So having a basketball court and a play structure, a destination mm -hmm. for people to come on their own time. Yeah. 
And is your department, uh, did they coordinate the um, summer music series? We do, I started that uh, two years ago. We had like a committee, Doug was coming to some of those meetings uh, when we, we launched that and um, we went from four concerts the first year to five this past year mm -hmm. and um, with the attendance was at least doubled this past year, which is great. So we really gained speed there. So um, that's, been, that's been a really fun addition to what we've had going on. Yeah. Yeah. And are those volunteer performers or is there a small stipend for them? Um, Mascoma has been donating uh, specifically towards our summer concert series, but then we do pay the, the nice. bands a small stipend as well. So. Right. But, yeah. uh, probably fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. I haven't I haven't dove into it. I'm really hoping to pull Carol Willington and and uh, Harriet Dumas in because they were the ones that did the, the you know, spearheaded the project of the newer play structure down by the shaded area. So I've, I've talked with Carol a little bit and I think I've piqued Harriet's interest, but I would really like to see if I can hop them in on that, that project. <laughs> so what are, are there other um, free non-structured um, opportunities or yeah, I guess options that Heartland doesn't offer currently that you are thinking about? That's a good question. So this, the concert series was a great addition. Yeah. And I'd like to expand on that because that's free music for people to come and attend. Um, uh, over winter break this year, I've booked the Vins Star Lab to come to the Heartland School Gym. So it's a planetarium and that'll be a, a free you just have to sign up because there's two showings, one hour each, but that'll be another free opportunity for anyone in the community to come and make use of at the Heartland, the Heartland School. Um, but those types of opportunities, so that's like a, a smaller, not a consistent one, but sometimes it's just a, an entertainment, a special event uh, that's an opportunity for people. But in terms of a destination, um, I think. Well, like you said, the, co the basketball court, tennis court, playground, I'm thinking the walking path, right, is another one. It's, I, I don't know what else there would be that could be offered. Yeah, with, we have North Heartland Park just sitting there and it's not really that well utilized, which is unfortunate because it's got a basketball court, a tennis court, a little play structure, a little ball field, but it's just, it's just sitting there. It doesn't really get that much use. It mm. definitely doesn't get the use that we get here in town. Mm. I know. So we should just rip it out and bring it down here? <laughs> the playground equipment's pretty nice, actually, down there. It is. No, I'm always, I'm always looking for new ideas. You know, if anybody has any thoughts, if anybody goes to a, an outdoor facility and sees something that looks like a great resource, love to hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something I've been pondering is like these built in the playgrounds where there's almost like the, the fitness structures that are built in or like a fitness trail type of thing. Yeah. So when the parents and the adults are there, they can get an opportunity to get some exercise on their own while their children are on the, the play structure. I think that's something that's starting to, to fit a need because that seems to be what, what adults do now rather than play in leagues, everybody works out. Ah. <laughs> that seems to be the biggest cultural change. You know, when I was growing up, everybody played in the softball league, the basketball league. Now everybody works out. That seems to be what everybody does with their with their time for. Because they can do it on their own time. Because you can do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, bike, bike, um, pump, pump trail, or whatever it's called, is that all falling apart? Is that that That's been gone out. for a few years now. Yeah. Yep. I think yeah. we chose to, we chose to flatten that out when we let the scouts put in the fire pit yeah. Yeah, that so they've got totally back gone. there. Yep. Do they use that? They do. Oh, yep. they do? Oh, good. Yep. The scouts <coughs> meet outside on a, fairly regular basis. They like to start at the gazebo and then think launch out to their fire pit. Oh. Yep. When you have the concerts, is there a, a pot or uh, something that people could leave a donation in if they chose to? We haven't done that to this point, but that is something we could do, yeah. You know, make it totally voluntary. Yeah. It is a free concert, but some people might like to leave some money behind. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. I was. I was hoping for us to build attendance to the point where it would be nice to invite um, 
possibly another community organization to provide some sort of refreshments or, or mm -hmm. food. I mean, it could conceivably be us as a recreation department, but just an opportunity for, for somebody else to do a little bit of fundraising with, with concessions in some way and shape or form, but. Maybe the even, library. Conceivably the library, yeah. Yep. And we, I went to a concert in Woodstock at the, behind the UU church up there. I forgot who sponsored that, but um, it was a, a local, local musicians. And, yeah, it was uh, Jay Nash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where the kitchen people were there to make pizzas and so and so you could we could do something like that here that, that, yeah. was, that was a good deal we we'll use our new pizza oven yeah yep. that's right <laughs> there we go we had the pizza oven <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> huh, sorry no. That's great. You guys are doing a lot of good stuff. Trying, thank you. Yeah. Well, we, we really are. I'm always so looking good. for for new new programs, new new special events. What so happened with the ice skating rink? Nobody used it. The last year that we had it fully up and running, I think we had two people that were really using it consistently. That was it for the time that it took. The fire department had to come with three tanker truck loads because we don't have the the dry, whatever it is, the dry hydrant to fill it or the dry, whatever we call it, a spigot. Um, then any time that we would get one of these 60 degree days in January, then we would lose it and have to have the fire department come and reestablish it. And then any time that it snowed, then we had to snow blow it, shovel it. I think it seems that anyone that's really skating is finding their way to the, to the ice rinks and the the area now. Our kids that do play <coughs> hockey or figure skate seem to participate in mostly Hartford and Woodstock. Uh -huh. yeah, so. yeah. Hmm. How about uh, kids coming to play soccer just, just amongst themselves? I mean, un unorganized. Does that happen? We've been trying to encourage that. It's something we would like to, to, like, to push over the summer. I've been talking with that with some of the parents that are really, in, really involved with soccer. Um, and we've been thinking about um, setting up, establishing one of our fields earlier in the season, so just getting the, the goals up the nets out and, and, and paint in one field earlier in the year and try to encourage like a pickup soccer night with a mix of, of parents and kids. It's definitely a, definitely a change in youth. When, when I grew up, I had a basketball in my backpack and I rode my bike around and I was looking for a group of kids to play a game with. And you don't see that as much as we used to. We still see a pretty good gathering around the basketball court more than anything else. I think that seems to be the one that universally that kids come and show up to and play on their own more than anything else. But um, yeah. Yeah, the ultimate, yeah, the ultimate. Yeah, no, yeah. We still have the, the disc golf is a free opportunity that's out there. And that's yeah. got its own little following. And then it's, those, those are people coming from all around the upper valley for the disc golf on their own time. Hmm. Yeah. Is there a skill set up? Yep, disc golf is still out there. We paint the lines. Hmm. Yeah. Big flat space. <coughs> is the walking path um, maintained? The walking path has taken some hits over the last few years. Really? Um, when we when we cleared the bank, we had a lot of movement um, by the soccer field that slid down, and we sort of lost the edge of the walking path uh, around the soccer field on that side. And then um, with some of these big storms. Wells Brook continues to get rearranged behind the rec center and move. Um, just this past summer, it came up and over that little peninsula that goes to the snowmobile bridge. Yeah. So that's something potentially that when we get another storm that, that might do that again. I think Dave set something up and was it through FEMA, a group came and did a planting on town's, on town's property of the side where the water came up and over, but, but it's 
privately owned property where the water started and came up and over that spot. So we that's out of our control to be able to, to do that. So the walking path is still mostly there, but it's taken some hits mostly through John, is that where we just did the Conservation Commission just did the plantings along that stretch? I'm not sure. Do you know who the group was that? Uh, they did. It was uh, Conservation yeah. Commission. Mm -hmm. The people who landed on the God's back in 1927 just created that. Okay. So we did. Trouble. They, they were offered the opportunity to participate? Was there a uh, financial match or something they had to come up with? No. no. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I just want to just add that John is also um, quite active with the uh, Covered Bridges Half Marathon, and they um, do make donations to us and um, covers most of, if not all, of the scholarship money that we use oh, to offset fantastic. Um, the kids there. So, oh, thanks for doing that. <laughs> Do they give uh, you so many free entries for, um, so you don't have to go through the lottery? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Ours is too big. Yeah. Plus, we speed up the heart of the set. You can get a play for a while. Yeah, it's not a spot. Sarah? Good morning, Papa. Good morning. What about it? Is it? Nothing. Nothing. Sits there empty because we don't have a tenant. No. It's not good. It'd be a great place for a preschool, a nursing school, a daycare. This is up in North Hartland. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were just talking we should get CATV to move yeah. in. Yeah. But they probably would not use the playground. They were notified actually. Oh, they were? Oh. Why are they looking for Were they places? interested yeah. in that? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they, they mentioned it last week. Gosh, she's looking at something else. <coughs> she knows about it anyway. It's in good shape. Well, anything else? Questions from anybody? No, for anyone? I don't mind. Yeah. Answer questions from Bill. I'm sitting there. <laughs> Anybody got a question for Bill? Don't, don't we have a lot of questions for the Lister's office, though? What's <laughs> I have no questions for you. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to ask. <laughs> My taxes. Who <laughs> is this? <laughs> I did notice that the mapping program was going up, though. I did notice that the, the mapping program that you're using, the, there was a slight increase with that. Is that because of the number of properties that are on it, or?
I have a real quick story to demonstrate how great that tax map is. Uh, a couple of Friday nights ago, Friday late afternoons, my son was running up on Advent Hill and got bit by, got attacked by three dogs and bit by one. Oh and um, I was able to say what was the address and immediately went to the tax map and then got a hold of the person that way. We didn't know, we didn't know where they, so it was just a good quick, this was a way to do it. Um, so, uh, Un unintended use. Unintended use. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty scary stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dave. Yes, thank you very much, nice Dave. Presentation. Thank you guys for coming in. I have a packet for you guys for next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we done? You're welcome. I'm going to get cake. Yeah, yeah. We're done. Um.